Alrighty guys, hey, welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Tech It. This is Scrotitis and we're hanging out in the advanced labs. Uh, last episode we introduced ourselves to Computer Craft. And um, I've been doing a lot of research since then and I thought today's episode would be kind of cool if we uh, went into one of the aspects of Computer Craft and uh, that being our mining turtle, Simon. I don't know if you guys remember that we named him that or not, but we decided Simon was an excellent name for a mining turtle. So anyway, what I kind of wanted to do today, and I don't know if this is going to be an episode that everyone's going to enjoy or not, but I want to go over some of the uh, aspects of programming uh, computer craft. Okay, now there's some tutorials out there. There's not a lot, and I thought that one that was maybe a little bit more programming language based uh, maybe a little bit easier and uh, a, a nice building base for some people so I'm gonna ask that if you do enjoy this episode that you go ahead and put a like on or, or comment let me know if you'd like to see more of these types of uh, programming Lua computer craft type uh, type of episodes because I got a lot of plans for the stuff that I want to do with computer craft but I don't want to bore you guys if you're not enjoying it all right, so like I said, this one may be a little bit more different than uh, what you guys are used to from me, but just sit tight, watch the first bit, and see if you enjoy it or not, all right? So let's get into programming Simon, okay? Now, the most important thing to know about Simon is that he listens to the Lua programming language. So we're going to jump into some of the basics in programming first and foremost, okay? Okay, so to start things off here, let's look at our programming interface here. Just right click right in the Turtle OS 1.4, and this is what we come up with, all right? This is where we're going to write all of our code, okay? Now, uh, some of the building blocks of programming languages. Uh, the main thing you need to know whenever you're writing is that you need to have a purpose. I want this to occur for this reason. So the main way that we do that is with uh, two things the first one we're going to talk about is what's called a condition okay this is saying uh, if the sky if the sun is up I want to wake up if the uh, if it's raining outside I'm gonna play computer games all day so what one thing that we might want to do with a turtle would be saying um, if there's not a block in front of me go forward okay so let's go ahead and write a simple program that's gonna do that use alright so here's our interface and let's go ahead and test out that conditional statement by writing a program uh, by do to do that you type edit and then whatever you wanna call it let's call ours move straight okay now that's gonna open up an empty pro empty screen for us to do whatever we want and we're going to use that condition that we discussed and a condition is a fault uh, is if so you start with that first you say if and then what you're comparing what your condition is and what we want to do is use one of the uh, turtle preset api's and say turtle detect now what this is doing is looking at the block directly in front of it if there's a block there it returns a true if there's not it returns a false by default, if you leave it as is, you're saying if turtle detect equals true. Okay? Now you can change this by saying if it's equal to false, oh, if I could type false, then we want to do an action. Okay? What action do we want it to do? Well, we're going to use another one of the turtle APIs. We're going to say turtle forward. And what this is going to do is move our turtle forward one block. Okay? And then we're going to end. It's a really simple, basic program. Let's go over the syntax again real quick. We're going to say if turtle detect, which is take uh, double equals, saying uh, that it's not, you're not giving the value, you're not assigning the value to this, you are comparing. So if turtle detect is false, then move forward one. Basically it's saying if there's space in front of me to move, do it. So let's go ahead and save and exit. Save and exit. And then let's go ahead and execute this. 
Well, first, let's uh, look. He's right here in front of us, all right? The goal is for him to fin end up right here, okay? Oh, wrong button. Right click in, move. Stri uh, can't type. Straight. Isn't that what it is? List. Yeah, move straight. All right. Let's take a peek at what we're what we're doing here again, guys. Move straight. Yeah. If there's not a block in front of it, then move forward. And there we go, guys. It just needed some fuel. Uh, move straight does work, and he went forward one block. So, uh, if we did this again, just to verify that I didn't do anything cheaty, <laughs> let's go into edit, move straight, so you guys can see. Edit, move straight, exactly the same as we left it. Okay. Exit. And we say move straight. And we move forward one. All right. Now let's add another level of complexity to that idea. Okay. What we're going to do is introduce what's called a loop. Now there's a bunch of different loops that are in the uh, Lua programming language. Today we're going to be dealing with what's called a conditional loop or a while loop. And basically what a while loop does, it says while this condition is true, do whatever we tell it to do. So it's kind of like walking. Uh, we take what we just did. We say if there's a block in front, then move forward. If not, then stop. Okay. Um, so let's look at a program that I wrote before, and we'll do some tweaking to it. Okay. Oh, not move straight. Edit. Move forward. Okay. Now... Uh, this is one that I, I uh... alright, so now we're introducing a couple new features, okay? We're introducing the ability to print to the uh, turtle interface using the print statement, which is the last line we have here. We're also introducing variables, and a variable is basically an item that holds a value, okay? So here we have the variable i, and we're, e we're setting it equal to zero, the value zero. And what we're doing is saying while turtle detect is is not is not false or basically while it's true move forward one block and add one to i okay and then we want to print at the end of our iteration and that should tell us how many blocks the turtle moved okay so we're going to go ahead and just have it right here we're going to do our move forward function again condition is not turtle detect so turtle detect says is there a block in front of me and we're saying if there's not a block in front of me move forward one block increment our variable by one and then come back up and check again is there a block in front of me if there's not move forward and do it again now when we get to a block in front of us we're just gonna go out and we're gonna print we're gonna tell us how many blocks we went okay so let's control exit out of that and type our er, get move forward and I hit cap locks move forward again if I could type guys so there it goes you just see it just move off the screen and it's gonna tell us oh. It moved 14 blocks. So there you go, guys. That's another really simple program, but it does serve a function, and it tells us how far the block moved from where we launched it to where it ended up. Okay. So I think let's get into some of the more fun stuff since we are dealing with the mining turtle, and it's probably the turtle that most people are going to be using. How are we doing here? by the way. Oh, we're out of tin. Did we fill? Wow. Okay. Um, 
guess we need to turn this one on. Need to watch it though. I don't want this getting overworked. Are we out of plant balls? Yes, we are. Okay. Uh, in the upcoming episode, we are so getting this all wired into the computer so we can just come over here and do what we're doing today. But right now, we're just sticking to the turtle. Okay. You know what? Let's just let's just stick to that right now. I don't want to get too out of control while we're up. But speaking of the next episode and what we're doing, we're going to run this cabling down and hook everything up. So we need to dig out this area. And why would we do it on our own when we have a mining turtle? All right. So let's go ahead and use our mining turtle. We're going to throw it in here. Always remember to refuel it because that was what made me look stupid in the first first place so to refuel you make sure that there's fuel available in its blocks hit refuel and it gives you what the fuel level is there you go so we've got a 192 so now let's take a look at one of our really basic uh, program that I wrote which is to just dig out a block all right so edit dig forward and this is very similar to our previous, <clears throat> except we're not checking to see if there's a block in front of us. We're just going to head and just dig. So what we're doing here is we're using I again as a variable, and we're setting it equal to zero. And then our conditional while, and this should be I, not one, while I is less than 10, do the following. We want the turtle to dig, which is it's going to dig one spot in front of it. Then we want it to move forward, and then we want to add one to I. So then it's going to go to one. Is one less than ten? Yes. Dig forward. Okay. Is one less than two? And then we're going to add one. It's going to be two. Is two less than ten? Yes. Dig forward, move forward, and, and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead, <coughs> save, and execute that function, guys. Move, or I'm sorry dig forward and now on this one also I don't know we set an end parameter saying at most go 10 blocks because if we just kept checking to see if there's a block in front of it which actually it could be a good way to find either a uh, valley or a cave but uh, if you just did the t detect but we're saying no we only want to go 10 blocks one high straight forward let's do it and there it goes those are the blocks we broke. <coughs> digging away, digging away, digging away. And it stopped. And it dug 10 blocks because we got 10 blocks in our inventory. All right. So that's that. Pretty straightforward. I've got one more for you guys. And I think this one uh, is actually what I'm going to use to dig out all this bottom area so that we can get our wiring down for next episode. Okay. So let's go ahead and take this over one more block. Put our mining turtle right in the middle. Fuel it up. Refuel. Refuel. And let's look at the last program that I wrote here. And that's going to be to dig out a three high tunnel, one deep. Okay. Or one wide, three tall, ten deep. Okay. And what we went ahead and called this was dig basement now you're probably looking at this you say whoa but all we've done is take taken the building blocks that we started with with the very first episode or very first example and we've added to it all right so now this last one what we're doing is it's the same condition as the last one we have a variable that we're setting equal to zero and we're saying is that variable less than 10 yes it is zero is definitely less than 10 so go ahead and do the following so we have a condition as our first thing. If our turtle detect up. Now this is the same as detect forward, except for it's looking at the block directly above it. So the turtle's going to go, is there a block above me? If there is, then, and it says turtle dig up. And that's the same as dig, except for it digs the block directly above it. We also then say if turtle detect down, meaning is there a block below me? If there is, then dig that block up. 
then we're going to go back and this is what we just did in the last one except for we are detecting this time if detect if there is a block then dig that block and actually I'm looking at this and I found a flaw if we leave this the way that it is currently if we came to a place where there wasn't a block in front of us it would stop moving forward and we don't want to do that we want to have below so basically what we're doing is we're saying is there a block above me yes dig it out is there a block below me yes dig it out is there a block in front of me yes dig it out then we want to move forward if we left it the way it was it would say is there a block above me yes dig it out is there a block below me yes dig it out is there a block in front of me no Oh, okay and then it wouldn't move and then it would go through the iteration again because we'd be adding one and it would stay in the, in the same spot so we need to move that turtle that turtle dot forward outside of that condition okay so turtle forward and then we have it actually printing each time and then we close our loop with an and end as well we have our moving forward then we print where we're at and then we iterate okay so let's go ahead and control save control exit and test this guy out with dig basement and let's go ahead and watch it work guys digs is there block yes up down straight move up down straight move up down straight move and it iterated from zero all the way up to nine or it moved if you count zero to ten spaces so I think you could see how easily then if you wanted to add to the code if you put that code inside of another loop where you say okay you did you did that entire loop where you dug this entire tunnel one high straight then you say turn left dig up down turn left again dig up down and then you'd be right there with these two blocks dug out and then you could repeat it again and he could dig all the way down this way and it's all by reusing the same code that you wrote once so that's actually I think that kind of displays how simple turtle coding can be and what you need base blocks wise to do so um, the Lua programming language isn't a really complex one for the things that you need to do to get a turtle to work exactly how you want it to and that's kind of what I wanted to demonstrate today guys I hope I conveyed that message well and I think I did um, I hope that the uh, that my my language uh, teaching skills weren't too poor uh, haven't really taught any sort of programming in quite some time so I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this episode hope it's a nice reference tool if you want to get started with turtle programming uh, we're gonna be doing a lot more with it on this series but again like I said at the beginning if you like this episode if you'd like the tutorial on uh, the actual specifics of coding let me know in the comments or give me a like either way indicating so I know either to uh, maybe make some more of this because there's so much that we can code and have these turtles do for us or if you didn't like like it so much let me know that too and we'll lay off I'll do the coding off on my own and we can just watch the uh, turtles do our work for us either way, way guys I had a blast doing this episode I hope you guys did too thanks for stopping by this has been Scrotitis and another episode of Let's Play Tech It I will see you guys all in the next episode Let's take a peek at what we're supposed to do.